welcome to this. Whatever this is going to end up being, I'm not sure. I haven't quite decided yet. I thought I'd start with something. And uh, I guess the best place to start would be a little background on how we ended up here. Started riding motorcycles about five years ago. And of course, like everybody who's really a 12-year-old in a middle-aged man's body, wanted a sport bike. So I bought myself a 600cc sport bike, and life was great. Rode that for a couple of years, decided I wanted something newer. The first one I had was a 99 CBR 600. Uh, nice bike, a lot of fun, but wanted something more updated, so I did that. Bought a 2011 ZX 6R, which is still in my garage at this point, actually, but uh, it is up for sale. So if anybody wants it, feel free to drop me a line. After a couple of years with the 2011 ZX6, I started deciding that I was pretty much at the point where I wasn't going to be doing any more on that bike. I had reached my limits. Don't get me wrong, the bike had all kinds of room yet, but uh, as far as being on the street, I wasn't going to be going any faster on it or leaning any harder or doing any more of those things that I had learned how to do up until that point. So the idea of an adventure, adventure style, dual sport bike, it always kind of appealed to me. So I went and bought one. Right now I'm currently on KLR 650. This one's a 2014. Just picked it up a little while ago. And uh, so the intent behind this is to get off the roads. I uh, went on a couple of three-day trips with a friend with the sport bike and I uh, found myself constantly looking down those gravel roads thinking hmm I wonder what's down there well I bought this to find out what's down those roads what I'm on right now used to be one of my favorite roads on the sport bike I find myself basically going down it at the same speed on this as I did on the sport bike like I said I had done all I was going to do on the bike um, time to move on to something else yeah, a couple of fellow riders here. So, decided to grab another camera, strap it on the helmet, and I figured we could maybe record my learning of street and dirt. A friend of mine, Dave, has already had me on an ATV trail, which uh, was, was interesting and fun. I dropped the bike. One of my goals when I got this bike was that I was going to be upset with myself if I didn't challenge myself enough to drop it within at least the first two weeks. Well, Dave helped me take care of that in the first day. So I have already dropped it on an ATV trail. It was a blast nonetheless. But uh, now I'm out exploring, trying to find... Mm, not sure exactly how quickly I'm going to stick to trails. I definitely want to do some gravel first. Um, I think maybe an ATV trail and a 400 pound motorcycle was not perhaps the best scenario for me to have my my first off-road adventure, but uh, eh, live and learn, like I said, it was a good time, so we'll see if we can find some gravel roads around here, which I'm pretty sure I know where there's a couple, and uh, I guess we'll pick it up from there. Whoops. So, too busy adjusting cameras and tunes and stuff, not paying attention to how fast the corner was coming up, so blew that. But anyway, um, so this is the kind of road where it kind of starts with the sport bike that I used to get a little, a little sketchy on, a little nervous. Because as you can see, there's little patches of gravel here and there, and for some reason gravel always freaked me out on the sport bike. I don't know why. This one, not quite so much, um, but actually what we are coming up to shortly, ah, that's the other thing with the sport bike, it had GP shift, so I find quite often still when I mean to shift up, I shift down, and when I mean to shift down, I shift up. Anyway, um, so we are actually going to one of the very specific roads that I used to drive by all the time, drive by, ride by, whichever, on the sport bike and think, you know what, the scenery looks like it might be kind of nice down there. I wonder what's down there. But I would never go because I knew that the road surface was crap. Unlike this very pristine pavement we have here, um, which is okay on this bike right now because actually the tires that came with this bike are what they would call a 91 or 9010, uh, which means they're really 90% for the street and only 10% for the dirt. Here's the street here. Um, so while they got me through that ATV trail, um, perhaps some more traction would have been better. So anyway, yeah, as road closed, you know, always a good sign for a sport bike. So 
as you can see, this is the kind of thing where uh, this is what I was really, really looking forward to on uh, on getting this style of bike, like the KLR 650, where it doesn't matter that, as you can see, the road is really not track-like in any way or form. But this bike just seems to handle it with ease. It really helps in the confidence, unlike the sport bike. Anyway, yeah, so I just wanted to see where this kind of went, and then maybe a little later today I'm going to head out and uh, see a few years ago there used to be some trails that were open, but the last I heard of them being open was 2012. So I don't know what's there now, but I'm thinking of heading up there next and seeing if we can maybe go even a little more off-road. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll drop the bike again. Feeling a little spry this morning, so uh, I should be able to pick it up. Now the only thing, see I don't really know where I am right now. I'm so used to taking the same route on the sport bike that I always knew where I was, where I was going. I would venture off a little bit, but I had pretty much discovered all the decent roads uh, around here. And nothing was really new anymore, unlike this. Like, eh, this is all new to me. The other thing I'm going to kind of learn while I'm doing this is uh, audio and video editing. So I'm pretty sure the first few videos are going to be rough, but uh, we'll see how that improves as well. Um, what kinds of people are doing moto vlogs, so it can't be that tough. Speaking of moto vlogs, one of the guys, uh, oh, this llamas, yeah, the llama farm. One of the guys that uh, kind of got me interested in this and sort of convinced me, and perhaps one of my neighbors now, to uh, to get an adventure style bike uh, goes by Everride. So check out his YouTube channel. Uh, he's got some great videos, uh, really cinematic stuff. I really enjoy it. Anyway, there's a little little plug for him. But you see, there's right now. If I was on the sport bike, I would be freaking out and pooping my pants. There would definitely be some wet stains on my pants by the time I got home. If I made it through this, but KLR, yeah, we're just gonna go. Can't believe that this is actually labeled a road. Is that? Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, this is this is the kind of stuff that when when I was on those those day trips up north a little bit with. Uh, buddy of mine Dave this is the kind of scenery that I love but I could never get to it now I'm finding it in my own backyard I've been on the road for what, 20 minutes maybe and uh, I had no idea that there was stuff like this this close to me and that people actually live on this road all right I've been past the other end of this road too I think I know where it comes out and uh, it said no exit, but now I kind of understand why. It's not that there's no exit, it's that the road practically disappears back there. I'm going to say that's somebody's house. The other thing I'm going to learn is uh, camera mounting. Um, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to end up with here today. Is it going to be pretty much the view of the, you know, the dashboard? I'm not sure. I think I've got the camera mounted on a decent angle, but... I will find out. So we are at the end of the road. Um, all right, you know what? Never been down that before. Totally worth it. It's beautiful. I think I should move there. So this road is another one of the roads that would come on. This is kind of as sketchy as I would like it to get on the on the sport bike. Um, this is pretty much pavement, but it's because there's so many gravel driveways and stuff. There's a uh, 
the odd corner with some sandy patches and some gravel patches on it. And again, there was, you know, a, uh, a bit of a pucker factor whenever I would come up, as uh, as Dan would say. But the inverse relationship between the size of your sphincter and the size of your eyes whenever you get into a bit of a tense situation. See, stuff like that, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to stop going on and on about how I used to get freaked out on the sport bike with gravel because you guys know that now, and yeah, it's kind of been said a couple times. Yeah. Fellow motorcyclist getting ready to go somewhere. A while ago, I was kind of toying with the idea of... Uh, Moving to BC, there was an opportunity that I thought was perhaps going to present itself, and uh, it was going on. I've only ever been there once. It was going on and on about uh, how beautiful it was. My wife and I were talking last night about how it's not. I mean, the, the mountains are are beautiful, but like anything, eventually you get you get used to it. Um, kind of like what's going on around here, where. This is all very, very beautiful, but because we see it all the time, we kind of cruise right by it, we don't look anymore. And we don't notice it. So that's one of the things I love about getting out on the motorcycle, is it gives me a chance to kind of just see what's out there. Um, you know, I very rarely come out with a plan, which could kind of be said for this entire video right now, where I have, I'm just rambling basically, but we'll see where it goes. And, uh, so I love getting out by myself, uh, or with a friend. Uh, that doesn't happen as often as it used to. But uh, just cruising around and taking in the sights. I found as I have gotten older, I appreciate that a little more. Perhaps that 12 year old in me is growing up a little bit. Maybe he's 13 and a half now or something like that. See. The back end squirrely a little bit there. So why the KLR 650? Uh, basically, price. Uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to essentially trade the ZX6R for an adventure style bike or dual sport. I'm not even sure what you would classify this. Like it's kind of in between the two. Oh, I wonder what's up there. I guess that's my next trick. See what's up that road. Have to remember that one. Uh, right, where was I? Trading in the ZX6R for whatever I wanted. So I basically wanted to do this with no more out of pocket costs and uh, with the price of the KRL, KRL, that's very feasible. Uh, these new go for about $7,000. I picked this baby up for $5,200 with uh, some extras and stuff. I'm hoping and kind of thinking, and I went the wrong way. I should have gone straight. Oh, well. Uh, it doesn't matter because it's, you know, it's not about where I'm going. It's about how I'm getting there, sort of. Anyway. Uh, and I'm pretty confident that I can sell the ZX6 for considerably more than the 5200 this cost me. So that should also get me some boots because the boots I have on right now are basically street boots. And as I found on the ATV trail, yeah, they don't grip the mud very well. Um, I, I mentioned that I dropped the bike and I did pick it up. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge though. I think some boots with some heavier tread would probably help that a lot. Whoop. Yeah, there we go. That doesn't look too sketchy to the people in the car behind me. All right. So let's see if we can find some trails or at least something to kind of go off-road. And uh, I'll be back. <laughs> 